old school bodybuilding clothing company. If you wish your fancy fitness center was a hardcore gym, you are old school. If you just ate chicken and rice and are about to eat chicken and rice, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle news update. This just in, the Chicago Pro Men's Open Division is done and finished, and Akeem Williams, the Brooklyn Beast himself, has won the show. Finally, Akeem in that winner's circle, defiantly, definitively, and he has beaten a terrific lineup here tonight. And I can't be happier for Akeem. I, I know Akeem from, you know, when Leon Brown, who's one of Arnold's training partners back in the day, discovered him on a bus. Okay, I, I believe it was in Staten Island somewhere. And uh, Leon called me up. He's like, you got to see this guy. And uh, sure enough, the, that weekend I went to the Brooklyn Classic. Akeem did his first show in the Novice, won the Novice overall at the, in light heavyweight. And we started working together after that. And you guys know our history. And I worked with him for many years until he got his pro card. And then, you know, Akeem did many bros versus pros challenges that we held here at RX Muscle. I mean, this is a guy who's one of the strongest bodybuilders, you know, in the IFBB, maybe the strongest. And now he is really finally arrived in, in a sense where I think he can go to the Olympia and do some serious damage. You know, the, the knock against him always was his back. He didn't have the back detail. He had it tonight, and he did enough here to beat a very, very good Justin Rodriguez. And you know what? It was a very close battle between these two guys. The judges worked these guys super hard. Um, you know, when you're that close... It comes down to, you know, what do you feel is better as a judge? You know, it's apples, it's oranges. You know, we've heard that analogy before, but it really is true. I mean, do you like the mass uh, of Akeem? I mean, from the side poses and from the front, Akeem is very, very, very dominant. I mean, that side chest pose on Akeem is just brutal. I mean, with the, with the side leg and all the detail there. Justin Rodriguez, however, you can make a really good case that he wins these back poses. Justin's got a great back double, a great lat spread from behind, and he's dangerous. I mean, I, I, look, I interviewed him on the show this past week. You know, he would, had to be the favorite going into the event, and, and you know what? The two of them really put on a great show because they're so evenly matched up. Akeem has got, Akeem has like got that kind of muscle that you can tell that this guy lifts heavy weights. That's, it's just dense, grainy muscle. Once again... His back really improved a lot from years prior where he was a weakness for him. Can it be better? Of course it can. But it's not, it, it's not a weak body part for him anymore. And that's why I think he got the win here. He showed a lot of improvement. Um, and he showed a lot of poise on stage. You know, Posey was never Akeem's big strength. He looks comfortable up on stage now. Very, very tough matchup. You have to wonder to yourself, you know what, does Akeem get the win here because it's a qualification for the Olympia? And, you know, Justin's going to the Olympia on points. So maybe that's what sways the decision at the end because they, they're so evenly matched. Judges say, hey, we want both these guys in the Olympia. You give Akeem the win, Justin goes on points. I'm not saying that's how it went down, but it could have. And you know what, I think that the fans and the sport benefits from that to see both of these guys on that Olympia stage because they certainly both deserve it. Uh, what can you say about Justin Rodriguez? I mean, he was perfect here. His conditioning was perfect. His posing was perfect. I have nothing. I don't think he has any weaknesses, this guy. He's, he's, he's a very dangerous guy, and he's only making improvements, and that's why I think we're going to see a lot more of Justin Rodriguez in the future. Put 10 more pounds on his physique. How dangerous is he? I mean, that's really what you have to think about. And you know what? When we go, we move to third place now. Max Charles, he's terrific here. I mean, Milos really has this guy dialed in. This is the best Max Charles consistently we've seen from show to show to show. You know, I, I think that Max beats gets beat by these two guys because they got better legs than he does. I mean, no one. I mean, you really can't make an argument for any weaknesses in Max's upper body. I mean, he's got a great. His front double, his width is so crazy. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. The delts. If you've ever seen this, I used to see this guy at Bell's gym. He would wear a 6X sweatshirt. 
you know, if I put a 6X sweatshirt on when I was at 315 pounds, it would be baggy on me because I wasn't that wide. He puts a 6X on and it fits him perfectly. It's unbelievable. I mean, that's how big Max Charles is. And I'm just telling you this because not many people can put a 6X sweatshirt on and fill it out. He could because of, of how big he is on that upper body. And you got to really see him in person to appreciate that. Max will go to the Olympia on points, which is it's a consolation prize, but it's not because he's going to the Olympia. And that was the goal here. So great job to Max Charles. I think, once again, him and Milos, great team. They seem to have really figured out Max's physique and bringing it to his best. Now, fourth place, Nick Walker, pro debut, North American champ, young guy. You know, everyone wanted to see this guy come in here and dominate and win the show. I, in my preview, I kind of said that, look, I felt he was going to be top five. I didn't think he was going to be able to win his first time out. You know, you see him alone, you see him on an amateur stage, it's a lot different when you put him next to guys that have a lot of refinement, like, you know, uh, Max Charles like Justin Rodriguez, like Akeem Williams. Uh, you know, it's weird because he, he was in, the call-outs are really strange and, and prejudging. You know, he was kind of in the second call-out there for, they moved into the second call-out. Then he even was compared with some of the third call-out guys. I think they were making this guy because he's a rookie, earn his stripes, so to speak. That, and we've seen it before with other rookies too. But at the end of the day, you know, he had the mass and his conditioning was tremendous to stand next to these guys. I think the fans were, expecting him to come in and, and be like, you know, uh, you know Dorian Yates and, and, and dominate everyone. And that's going to take a while. He, does, he still has to refine his physique. He's got a lot of mass and a lot of conditioning. And it, it, he's going to improve that, what we call muscle maturity, the longer he trains and the more he refines it. But I think this is a great showing for him. I think the judges had to really go back after prejudging and maybe sit down and talk about this and say, hey, Let's give this guy a chance to get a couple more comparisons against the top guys to see where he really fits in. And I think you could have, you could have made a, a case for him being a little higher or a little lower, depending on you know, you know, what you felt. I thought Eddie Brecamontes in, in fifth place looked amazing. I could have put him in third and, and not had a problem. So those top five guys were very closely matched is what I'm, the point I'm making. I think Nick Walker in fourth was, was the right decision. He won't be going to the Olympia, obviously, on a fourth-place finish. But I don't, I don't think he was ready for that anyway. Next year, let him you know, focus more on refinement, bring in more detail, do a couple shows, go to the Olympia, and I think he's going to be a dangerous guy absolutely in, in the future. Now, fifth place, Eddie Bracamontes might have been you know, the big surprise of the show. And a matter of fact, I, I actually felt terrible because when I did my preview for the this uh, Chicago Pro, I've got to include him, and I know Eddie very well. He's he, obviously Chris Aceto trains him, and you know I felt so bad that I didn't include him. I, I just didn't see his name on the list, and he absolutely deserved to be mentioned in that top five, uh, you know, conversation. And you know what? Fifth place for the physique. If you look at some of the comparison shots, it looks like he might have not got a, fa a, a fair deal on that fifth place because I think you could have made a case for him going as high as second or first even. I mean, if you really want to. I mean, the guy, the guy doesn't have any weaknesses. He's really in tremendous shape here. But structurally, he's not as good as some of these other guys. But he did his homework. And you know what? I think that he should be really proud of, of the progress he's made over the last couple of years. And if he keeps improving like this, he will be on an Olympia stage for certain in the future. Finishing in sixth on win, who... Um, is going to just miss out on going to the Olympia on points, if, if my calculations are correct. Uh, Sid and I uh, did some calculations, and I think that on is going to be just out of the points. I think he actually might have even one point more than Big Ramy, and that's what we're going to talk about in a little bit is what's going on with Big Ramy now. But to finish it off, Akeem Williams, huge victory here for him. Tremendous momentum on this last Olympia qualifier for the 2020 Olympia. We'll see him on stage. We're going to see in the point standing, we're going to see uh, Justin Rodriguez, obviously, with the most points in the point standing. The top three point getters are going to go. Max Charles and then Regan Grimes, who's in that third position with the points, will be at the Olympia. So, unfortunately, On is going to miss out, and, and R Big Rami is going to miss out. Now, the question is, does Ram I see Rami put some pictures up all, all of a sudden. We haven't seen a picture all year from him. Now, all of a sudden, he's putting pictures up because, obviously, he realizes now that he's not making the Olympia on points he obviously wants to go. He's obviously you could tell by the way he looks that he obviously he's, you know, he's been dieting. Obviously, the question is, should he be given a special invite? 
Now, you have one side of the coin where you can say, you know what? Yeah, he should because he's, he's a freak and he's, uh, he's won shows and, you know, uh, you know, he got COVID and it's not his fault. But did he get COVID? He's taking pictures in the gym, okay? I mean, he just got diagnosed with COVID this past week. What is he doing in the gym? Isn't he supposed to be quarantining? Isn't he sick? I don't know. Suspicious. I have a lot of suspicious uh, feelings about the whole situation. I felt that, you know, maybe, you know, this was an excuse not to do the show. Maybe he wasn't ready. I don't know what happened. I don't know the behind the scenes details, but this is suspicious. This is the second year in a row. We've had problems with Rami. Should he be given an invite? Well, should Samson Dowda be given an invite because he wasn't able to get a, a plane flight to, to the, uh, you know, to the, to the Tampa Pro uh, when he went to the airport and they wouldn't let him fly out? You know, that was COVID related, right? They had quarantines. They, they, you can't leave the country. Give him a special invite. Why not give a couple of these other guys that couldn't qualify this year a special invite? I don't think it's fair. I don't think, I, I love Big Rami. I think he's a great guy. I think that he's got a tremendous physique. I would have loved to see him be Mr. Olympia the last couple of years, but he hasn't pulled that off yet. Should he go to the Olympia? Okay, on a special invite? No, because if he, if he goes, you got to give everyone a special invite. All the guys that had the same, you know, COVID inconvenience, I call it. It seems a little suspicious that we're seeing pictures of him already, okay, in a gym setting. Um, I, 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 I'd love to see the, the positive COVID test. Maybe if he can provide that, uh, maybe that then, then he has a, an argument to stand on in terms of getting a special invite. But it's not fair to the other bodybuilders, you know. He didn't win the Olympia. He didn't win, you know, the, you know, the Arnold Classic USA, okay. And even still, I mean, you know, he doesn't have the status of Kai Green or Kevin Lavroni, okay. Rami hasn't earned that yet. So, you know, why he waited till the last minute to do the la- one of the last qualifiers of the year, I don't know especially if he knew he, he was on the borderline of points. It just, the whole thing seems very, you know, suspicious and not smart and not well planned out on his part. Look, I'm just another schmuck from the street, so what do I know? Obviously, the people who make those decisions are the IFBB, but the truth is that the fans shouldn't dictate who goes to the Olympia and who doesn't. The IFBB should sit down and, and, and analyze it just like I did and say to themselves, is this the right move? Is it fair to the other competitors? And that's really where it amounts to. And we're going to do probably an iron debate on this whole topic uh, this coming week. For now, though, big, big, huge congrats to all the guys who qualified for the Olympia and for Akeem Williams for winning a very big pro show in 2020, one of the weirdest years we've ever had. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle News Update.